Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmosso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Launched in 1983, the Rolex Submariner Date 16803 was the first of the two-tone subs. A new Submariner for a new decade. Rolex had made the transition from a Purveyor of upscale utility watches to a no holds barred totem of status for those in the know and those who would like to be in the know, the elite of the Gordon Gecko era. The timepiece is extravagant, and this one with a serial number of 9.3 million came towards the end of the line for this reference in 1987. 40 millimeters in stainless steel with yellow gold crown and bezel. The watch measures 12.6 millimeters thick, 47.2 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and then 20 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs. You can see the watch on my wrist wears well. It is perfect for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, and as you can see, there's plenty of clearance on each side of my wrist. From the top, you can see I've got clearance on each side, and the watch is flat enough that it'll fit underneath most cuffs. Now, the watch here is unconventionally equipped, as at some point in the past, the bracelet was either swapped out, wore out, or perhaps simply was misplaced. And this timepiece is equipped and priced accordingly with a lovely and beautifully appropriate alligator leather strap. Both gold-plated, Rolex pin buckle and strap are factory pieces obtained for this watch. And this is probably what the Cellini collection would have to be for Rolex to sell a lot of dress watches. This is what Cellini should be, a dress watch adaptation of a popular Rolex sports watch. Now it is a strap that features a gloss medium rectangular scale alligator leather in dark brown. It has a folded edge, it's calfskin on the underside, and as you can see, a brand new Rolex factory strap. The timepiece includes a case that I would rate as approximately a 6.5 to 7 out of 10. This is a watch you buy as a daily driver. The absence of the bracelet and the fact that the lugs show evidence of obvious refinishing means that this is one you buy for its period ambiance, a vintage watch you can wear without a care. It's not going to make you wrist rich, but it's going to make your wrist look good. So this is one for those who want something they can wear, they can daily drive. Now the timepiece does include satinated lug hoods and polished flanks, and the crown is a trip lock in gold, you know, because it has three dots and it's gold. It has a bezel that is 120 click, gold bezel, anodized aluminum insert, and as you can see, This watch features a Luminova dial that was subsequently fitted. So this is a watch that has had some work done on it between the servicing, the replacement of the bracelet, and the replacement of the dial and hands, which is another reason why I say this is one to wear if you want the effect and impact of a Rolex sub, but you don't want to worry about every scratch and nick. The best feature of this watch is arguably the most important part of any vintage Rolex, and that is the dial. Now, of course, it is a service replacement because it is a Luminova, but it is wonderfully handsome, unmarred, unoxidized. There's no contact damage from bad watchmaking. You can see it has a lovely golden-toned date disc. that We have 18 karat gold hands as well as indices, gilt or gold style printing. And the watch, of course, having a active replacement Rolex Luminova dial, a Rolex factory replacement, assuredly, this is an aftermarket, means that it still works as a dive watch in the sense that it is very luminescent after dark. And of course, you've got that little luminescent pearl that you can line up with the minute hand to create an impromptu zero to 60 minute count up timer. Internally, you can see the Rolex, well, you can imagine, I should say the Rolex transitional automatic caliber 3035. Automatic winding, it had a 48 hour power reserve, a quick set date, hacking seconds. It beat away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It was a COSC certified Swiss chronometer free sprung with a Breguet overcoil hairspring, uh, but it has 27 jewels and it has a balance cock rather than the later balance bridge, making it a little bit distinct from modern Rolex 31, 35, and 32, 35 architectures, but they are still very tough timekeepers. The watch is originally built, would have been rated to 300 meters, and this watch is not yet so old that on a different strap you couldn't take it swimming. Reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.